Thanks for staying with us. The federal government spends $600 million monthly on fuel importation, according to, the, uh, according to Edu, the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy. He disclosed that the country currently spends $600 million monthly on fuel imports. He attributed the high costs to neighboring countries extending to Central Africa, benefiting from the nation's fuel imports. He also explained that this situation was a key factor in President Bola Tinubu's decision to remove fuel subsidy, as the country lacks precise data on domestic fuel consumption. To discuss this is Nick Agule, a public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to you, Mr. Agule. Hey, Rume. Good morning. And good morning to all our viewers globally. Yes. We hope that you are safe because uh, while we were having protests in Nigeria, there's also protests in the UK. We yes. don't know what the situation is now. Is it better? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so uh, this is what I tell people, that uh, nations have to be run with the rule of law. Uh, humanity only obeys the law when they know it's going to be enforced. So you look at people in the UK, you think, well, they are good people and all of that. There are a lot of bad people here. Anytime there is a, a slight indication of a breakdown in law and order, you see their bad side come up. Mm. So you, you expect that here in the UK, all of those who are uh, carrying out this criminality in the name of protest uh, against immigrants, they are going to be brought before justice. Mm. Uh, unlike in Nigeria, these things happen. Nobody is, is held responsible, especially if they are highly connected. So bottom line here is that nations like Nigeria must enforce the law to bring human beings to respect law and order. Otherwise, development is going to be difficult. Okay. Well, we're glad that you're safe at least. Um, now let's go to the meat of the matter that so we're we discussing. Another, we're joined with Bola Bolawale. He's a veteran journalist and public affairs analyst. who will also be diving into this topic right now. Good morning, Bola. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Bola. We can't hear. Okay, okay. I think you might be muted. Yeah, I think he's, he's on now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for having me. I'm here with you. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so for much. joining us. Okay. Let's begin with you, uh, Nick. Uh, $600 million monthly. That's what is spent on fuel importation. And the blame um, uh, for removing or the reason for removing or one of the greatest reasons for removing fuel subsidy, according to Wale Dun, is that other African countries are benefiting. Let us know the workings of the oil sector because you are a, a great, you have been a great player in that sector. Let's know how it really works and uh, why this excuse is a, a good one or a bad one. Thank you very much for that question. I think there is a lot in the oil industry in Nigeria that the government needs to come clean to the Nigerian public for. We, I mean, imagine a, a, the minister of uh, finance and coordinating minister of uh, of uh, the economy comes out to say i have no data about the consumption the quantity of liters of petroleum products that are consumed in nigeria to me that's a, a very terrible thing to happen and that is because data from the oil industry has been shady uh, first and foremost there is some sort of ambiguity in what the minister said, the Honorable Minister said. If the Honorable Minister is still insisting, because we analysts believe that the government is still paying subsidy, but if the government is still insisting that fuel subsidy has been removed, then it is expected that the price at which Nigeria is selling petrol is the market price. Why then would neighboring countries around us be coming to buy petrol in Nigeria? I mean, we go to Singapore, to Rotterdam, to Houston, we bring in petroleum products at market price, no subsidy. Why would Benin Republic, Togo, or Ghana now come to Nigeria to buy petrol at that price when they could as well assess that petrol at that same price in the international market. So something is not adding up there. Mm. The second thing is that 
Nigeria has this program called Direct Supply, Direct Purchase, GSDP, whereby we were sending the crude oil that was meant for our local refineries to refineries abroad for them to refine for us and send the products back to us. The Minister of Finance, in saying we are paying $600 million daily to import petroleum products, why is he not talking about that arrangement? Let him come clean. Whether Nigeria is still sending crude oil to refineries abroad under that DSDP program, or we have stopped sending those barrels. And if we have stopped sending those barrels, what is happening to the money that those barrels are being sold for? Is it the same money we are now using to import the petroleum products or not? Let's also not forget that when the petroleum products are imported, they are not given to Nigerians for free. As I speak, Nigerians are buying petrol at anything from 700 naira to 1,000. In some places, 1,500. So government is making the money back. So why would that become a problem? On government finances so these are unanswered questions that the minister of finance will need to provide further clarity upon but the bottom line here is this in saying that we are spending so much to import petroleum products that is a problem and the minister didn't go far enough to talk about the solution the only solution to that pro problem is to get Nigeria's four refineries with a combined capacity of 425,000 barrels per day to work. And we have these refineries with the NMPC. Uh, uh, Mere Kari, the group CEO of NMPC Limited, it, there's a video circulating very recently. I don't know if you've watched it. Back in 2019, he was promising Nigerians that all four refineries will work before President Buhari's tenure ends. We are now one year plus into the tenure of President um, Tinubu. None of the refineries is working. Why is the minister not asking the question that can, can we continue to spend this much to import products when our refineries should be working? And if the NNPC cannot sort out our refineries, then let us take these refineries away from them and hand them over to those who can do it for us. Why is the minister not going that far? Let me just clarify this before we go to um, our second guest. Um, uh, you talked about the direct purchase, direct uh, buying, uh, all that. Um, just in simple terms, does that mean that if we're still doing that, we are not supposed to spend a cobble on importing fuel? Rather, we are going to have it like a trade by butter thing. Exactly. This is what that program was meant to be. Send the 450,000 barrels that were meant for local refining. But because our refineries were down, send those barrels to a refinery abroad. The refinery will convert that crude oil into petroleum products and send it back to us. So if that is the program that is happening, then why would, at the same time, the government will be saying we are buying petroleum products? So it is left for the Minister of Finance to come out clean and tell us we have stopped this sending of crude oil to refineries abroad. Then we can understand. But as it stands now, nobody knows the status of that program. The NMPC, which with due respect to them, their group CEO was at the National Assembly yesterday also saying we are not thieves. We are Petro as well. Why is he just defending himself now? Who has called him a thief? Mm -hmm. That he is now defending himself that they are not thieves, they are Petro. What sort of patriotism? That for almost 20 years, if not more, you have not refined a single barrel of crude oil from our four refineries. Let the Minister of Finance, the group uh, CEO of NNPC, to tell him in categorical terms, is this DSDP program still working? If it is working, then why are we buying petroleum products? Why are we buying them? But if it is not working, where are those barrels? Where is the money? If they have been sold, let us see the barrels. And you know, 
the controversy with Dangote Refinery, Dangote Refinery was actually referring to those barracks. When he was now saying, instead of sending them abroad to a refinery to refine before bringing the product back to her, why not give it to me? Who is a refinery here in Nigeria? So we need to understand that aspect. You know, it's a big question that needs to be answered. Let's let's try Bola. Okay, um, yeah. So let me uh, let me speak to Bola now. Uh, um, one of the issues that you know the finance minister raised was the fact that we do not have enough data for our domestic fuel consumption. Should we still be at this point where we don't have enough data? Doesn't that kind of play on our intelligence as Nigerians? And then you know the NNPC or what is their role if, as of today? For a country that is over 60 years, we still do not have simple technology like data to know what we actually consume as a nation. And so obviously all of these other countries are coming here to benefit. Is that a good enough excuse from the finance minister? Hello. I think we just lost Bola's audio. Okay, Nick, please, can you answer my question? Yeah, I have, I've already said that, that it is, it is troubling yeah. that the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy of Nigeria can come out and make such a statement. It shows that this is a disastrous situation that needs to be arrested immediately. How can the Minister of Finance, whose duty it is to pay for petroleum products, say that I don't know the quantity that is being consumed? Imagine an accountant in a company saying that i don't know the number of staff that we are paying salary for i don't know the the, the 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 quantity that suppliers give us of our raw material that i need to pay for can a statement like that be made you know and and this is where mr president needs to come in he has to be abreast of the news he has to know what is happening and he needs to ask the question i expect mr president this morning to say minister of finance come to me Group CEO of NNPCL, come to me. Um, uh, Executive Secretary, Nigeria Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, come to me. Let me know this thing. And also the downstream, the midstream and downstream uh, fellow. Come to me. How is it possible that we can say we don't know the quantity of petroleum products that are being consumed? And let him bring the customs uh, controller general to that room and the chief of defense staff and his service chiefs. How can Nigeria throw their hands up in the air and say they are smuggling our crude oil? Uh, sorry, um, they are smuggling our petroleum products. See, ministers say, when we buy the thing, we bring it in. The thing goes to East Africa, uh, east of uh, our border, as far as Central. This thing is moving in petroleum tankers. Are we not saying that our borders are no longer being policed, that Tankers can be leaving our shores and nothing can happen and the Minister of Finance is lamenting. Is that possible? So these are the answers that we are looking for. Mm. Okay. Um, I, I, there's a day I, I had a guest and I was trying to make sense of uh, uh, what the opportunity cost is uh, to Nigeria, what it means to Nigeria, uh, sending this crude oil out. Now, the argument was that when we send crude oil out, we make uh, money in foreign currency, we make dollars, and that's the reason we should be sending it out. And my question was, um, will it not be better if we can have all that uh, fuel, all that crude oil, or as much as we need in Nigeria, to be processed in Nigeria, refined in Nigeria, and sold out to other countries. Will we not make more dollars than buying from them and selling the crude oil to them and buying uh, petrol products from them, uh, forgetting that they are byproducts that come out of this crude oil that these countries make money with? And we are saying that because we sell them the crude, we make dollars in return. What is more beneficial to a country? Is it selling the crude and getting the petrol back, or processing or refining it here and selling to other countries. Nyango, what you have said now is the correct thinking. But that thinking can only come from leaders who are very strategic in their own thinking. Look, Nyango, we have lost the benefit of being an oil producing, an oil and gas producing country. 
Because if we started at the outset to do what you have said, we will be adding value to the crude oil before we export it. That value addition will mean refineries. Today, what we're talking about four refineries, Dangote refinery, Nigeria would have got a refining capacity that is about 5 million barrels per day. And we will be refining every single barrel of crude oil that we produce before we send it out so that our people will be in the jobs, in the refineries, the taxes will be paid by the refineries, and then all the, the, the multiplier effects with the shipping, with the insurance, with the whole port activities around the export of these refined petroleum products that we have on our economy. But not only that, Nigeria had leaders who had foresight. We will not even be using petrol at all. Everything that we refine from crude oil, we sell it abroad. Instead, in, instead we, are, we are flaring our gas. So these leaders would have said, no, stop that gas flare. Harness that gas. Let us be using gas in our motor vehicles, in our engines, everywhere we're using gas. So Nigeria would have, this CNG they are talking about today as if it is a new technology. It has been there for years, for decades. All cars in Nigeria would have been running on gas. Then we use gas for our industrial purposes, use gas for electricity generation, use gas for cooking, use gas for firing all the kings in our in industries and all of that, in our steel plants and all that. And every single, I mean, crude oil that is produced, we will refine it and sell it abroad. Do you know that by now, Nigeria will be awash with dollars. Nigeria will be so developed, we will have money. But we have lost it all. As I'm speaking to you now, if you go to the Niger Delta, the gas is being fled. And then Nigeria sells crude oil abroad, and then we go abroad to buy petroleum products. And then it occupies the Minister of Finance time. It occupies the, the group uh, CEO of NNPC time. They are giving us press conferences, but we are not buying this thing cheaper. We are not even seeing it. Sometimes there is scarcity. But this is what was happening with telephones. We are not seeing it. Until it was taken away from NITEL, a government behemoth, and handed over to MTN and Co., who are telephone companies, and today telephone is not a problem. The day we hand over the petroleum industry to those who can do it, actually, when I mean petroleum industry, the downstream of petroleum industry, because the upstream is already handed over to IOCs. And that is why we don't have a problem that Nigeria is not producing crude oil. We produce crude oil every day. The question is about the quantity, but we produce it every day. While the downstream that is in the hands of the NNPC, we are refining zero lit uh, liters, even as we speak. All right, I think we're back with, we're joined back with Bola. So Bola, I was going to ask, right, if we're spending $600 million monthly, that's a huge amount of money, money that we don't, do not even have because we're still taking loans for other sectors, right? At this point, what should we be doing? I know Nick Aguilar has, you know, highlighted a few things, but what should we be doing for us to ensure that we're not spending this amount of money on imports? For instance, making sure that the refineries are working. But what other um, ways can we ensure that we're saving costs when it comes to the oil sector? Thank you very much. Thank you. Are we sure it is only $600 million that we are spending every day? Mm. Is the minister on top of his uh, data and statistics? Uh, uh, like he said, he, he doesn't have the figures of uh, what quantity of crude we are selling. Does he have this data that is $600 million that we are spending on importation of crude oil on a daily basis? Is it exaggerated? Is it inflated? But if we agree that he's on top of his uh, or, or, of his job and that he has the figures. Now, we must understand that this $600 million, we place it side by side what we are making from the sales of crude and from the sales of uh, gas or whatever every day. Are we making up to that? 
when we discount this six hundred million dollars from what we are making, what do we have left? If at all we have anything left, that is what is going to give us the impression of whether we are running well or we are running uh, badly. And that is why the other commented, the my my, my my partner in the house was wondering that uh, how much do we have left? You must have. The government must come out with figures, facts and figures. They must be open, they must be transparent. But I can tell you, everybody knows that the most opaque organization that we have in this country today is NNPC. That is one area where people are not giving facts and figures, where we don't even know what it's up. They run the place like Kabaz. They run the place like it's a, it's, it's a secret society, secret organization. They run it as if it does not belong to Nigerians, and the Nigerians don't have a right to understand what is happening, know what is happening. And I don't think we can uh, excuse the president from whatever is happening in the NNPC. Number one he is the Minister of Petroleum Resources, since he has not appointed one. He has only appointed the Minister of State. So the President is the Minister of Petroleum Resources. As President, the box stops on his table. As Minister of Petroleum Resources, the box stops on his table. He can fire, he can hire in that organization. He has decided not to fire. And people are asking him why. Because everyone believes that uh, if everything runs well in NNPC, Nigeria will run well. And we have the words of uh, the late MK Abiola for it. When MK Abiola said he was going to banish poverty in six months from Nigeria, and Nigerians asked him, how are you going to do this? He said, I am part of the system. He said, I will only do two things. He said, I will hold NNPC with one hand, and I will hold the central bank with another. He said, once I have done that, he said, Nigerians should go and sleep. Can you imagine that? Is that NNPC, I will hold it with one hand. Is that the CBN, I will hold it with both hands. And the problems we have today revolves around these two organizations, CBN and NNPC. And the president is the one that has appointed and that is keeping the people who are in CBN and who are in NNPC. So he should have the figures. He only needs to look for the figures. And don't forget that the president is, has worked in an oil company. He has worked in mobile oil. So he should, he should not be a stranger to the activities of uh, uh, the oil corporations. He should not be a stranger to things that have to do with oil exploration, oil produce, uh, production, and things like that. And don't forget that the president also is an accountant. Is, is an accountant. He's been a treasurer of Mobile, so he is not somebody you can easily bamboozle with figures. And he knows the importance of figures. So I want to say that the box stops on the table of the president. If we have had this problem for decades, and which is true, is not his creation. This problem was not created by President Bola Metinubu. It has been there. Now that we have a man who understands figures, we'll be having presidents that did not understand figures. But here is a man who understands figures. Here is a man who, is, who should be familiar with the terrains of uh, the oil company. Having worked with one of the major oil corporations in this country, it is, it, 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 it is now his responsibility to straighten out things in that sector. We saw on social media a while, ago, say a while ago, how Saudi Arabia monitors every drop of oil that gets out of its ground with technology. Why can't we do that? Why can we say that we don't even know the quantity of fruit that we are producing? Why can we say we don't even know the quantity of refined oil products that we are consuming. Okay. Like uh, my colleague has asked, is it because our borders are so porous that tankers go in and go out and come in without anybody checking them? No right. checks and balances. This is a product that cannot be carried with ordinary, uh, with, 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 with ordinary jerry cam. You need tankers. And when they say that Nigeria 
uh, smugglers are smuggling uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of liters of uh, petrol. You wonder how, why, where are they taking this? Do, don't we have people policing our borders? We uh -huh. have uh, immigration even coming inside okay. town. We have cost of coming right, well, inside uh... town. <laughs> So well, that is what I think. Yeah, I, we, I, I could hear the passion with which you're talking. And everybody, when we're talking about this, we're just, uh, just uh, uh, raising our hands and asking the questions. Um, what is really happening? Is it that these people don't have the reasoning faculty to think about the things that the ordinary man on the street mm -hmm. thinks about? What is really going on? Is it really a secret society or, or that? But these are questions that uh, we have raised and we, yeah. we keep raising, but we will answer them in subsequent uh, programs, I'm sure, because one hour even is not enough to answer all this. Because divulge yes, this. Right yeah. now, this is where we have to draw the curtain on this segment. We'd like to thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the program. Nick Agule and uh, Mr. Bola Bolaole. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, and. Uh, good morning again to our viewers. Mm. Let's All keep right. hope alive. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Yeah. Have a nice day, gentlemen. Thank you very much. So we'll take a break now, and when we return, we'll be looking at uh, the statements of uh, our political office holders, especially uh, the Senate President, Apabio, uh, who uh, a chieftain of the APC, his own party, is calling for his resignation. Stay with us. <laughs>